Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this edition of the show. Sorry for the late start. Like, I know there's an eight second awkward pause of me just like sitting here, but that's because my computer's been really odd right now. But anyway, um, I, I know I always say this, it's always an honest mistake, and I'll probably do it more here on out, but I accidentally clicked out of the video while I was recording, so this is actually take two. But, um, anyway, the main story I did was. Uh, about Chris Jericho returning to WWE and how he even feels, I guess, and that will he return is the major question. And he's been telling some people, yeah, I'm returning, and some other people, well, I might, I might not. And Chris Jericho has always been a very hard person to get a read of, and he's a wrestling mastermind. And Jericho, when he first came back in 2007, with the whole save us promos, a lot of people were like, oh, I don't know if this is Jericho, this could be Jericho, and it, there was so much buzz around, it was unbelievable. And then basically in a nutshell, the very last video said break the walls and then we all knew it was Jericho, which WWE really blew it in my opinion, but I think that when you have a guy like Chris Jericho, he's easy to market around, and he's also a mastermind. And those are two huge keys. And not just the entertainment industry, but any industry. Jericho just happens to be one of those guys who can do it all. Whether if it's on Dancing with the Stars, whether if it's Fozzy, whether if it's with WWE. No matter what Chris Jericho does, he's always successful at it. And it's hard to find anyone who's like that, but Jericho is. And you gotta give credit where credit's due. When he returns, what brand do I think he'll be on? I would say... I'd say SmackDown. I, I could picture him on SmackDown. With Randy Orton, Christian, you got guys like Sin Cara coming up the ranks. I'd love to see Jericho versus Sin Cara any day. Sign me up for that. And when I say that, I'm not talking, I guess, the Chris Jericho of now. But more so, I'm talking about the Chris Jericho of old. And, like, ECW, WCW Chris Jericho. That's the Y2J I want to see. I don't think people even call him Y2J anymore, <laughs> but um, I just did. Now, I think on the other hand, it'd be pretty great to see him on Raw with Cena and all those guys, but I, I just don't see that happening. I really don't. I mean, it's take your pick. Um, Jericho's just one heck of an entertainer, and either way, I think WWE's ratings will definitely spike once he comes back, if he does come back. And it was funny because, one last thing about Jericho, he uh, actually did a interview in 2007 before he came back. I can't remember what band he was referencing, but he basically just said, oh yeah, well I'm just like this band to where, you know, they're retired and I want to stay retired. But I guess like a few days beforehand, that band actually announced that they were again back together to tour and entertain again. So, I think that... Jericho, he, he likes to, he, he's devious, let's just put it like that, he is a devious mastermind, and <laughs> and whether if it's in the ring or outside the ring, I, Jericho's Chris Jericho, and he, he's the man, he can work over anyone, and when you have as much talent as what Jericho does, it's really hard to argue that fact, but um, Chris Jericho's not the only person who I really want to talk about, it has been a slow week in wrestling, so... Forgive me if these topics are kind of stupid or lame or however you feel. Um, but anyway, China debuted for WWE, or TNA rather, and she was revealed as Kurt Angle's business partner or something. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I've said this thousands and thousands of times on here. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I'm not a TNA fan, so chances are I probably even have the story wrong. But. I guess this will be setting up a match, which will be uh, Kurt Angle and China versus Jeff Jarrett and Karen Jarrett. It's kind of weird to say, considering that we've all known her as Karen Angle, but um, that's just a whole messy situation. The point is, is that I I'm eager to see China in wrestling again. I mean, like I said, I know I'm not a huge TNA fan, but I'll watch it for a few weeks, maybe just to support her, because she always was a very dynamic talent back in the 90s and 
very early 2000s, and I think that China can do it again. It's just that she has to get into the wrestling mentality again, and that it's no longer celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew, and it's no show she's been on, and no sex tapes, and no drugs, and you know all that stuff that China's been through. It's like you gotta stray away from that now. That's a gray area in your life you don't want to talk about. But now you're back on wrestling. You're back in a ring again. And a lot of people really thought that, oh no, she's not. She's not gonna do it. She's too whatever. She's too bland, or she's too this. She's too that. But I think that China can, and you know we'll see how she does in this mixed tag match, and hopefully her and Kurt can get the W. I just said W, and I don't even know why. I say W. But anyway, point is, congrats to her. Chris Harris also returned to TNA. Um, for those who care, like I said, I don't watch TNA, so just don't take it personally for what I say. But um, anyway, another piece of news is that WWE will now be using managers again, and that you're going to be seeing a lot of familiar faces back with WWE. Um, for those of you who watched one of WWE's online shows, Superstars. Um, basically, Tyson Kidd now has Michael Hayes, the former Freebird, yes, as his manager. The same Michael Hayes who managed arguably the greatest tag team of the 90s, other than DX. And by 90s, I say late 90s, the Hardy Boys. So, that's quite a manager that he's going to have. So... We'll see how far that goes. And I really like that because managers have really been a missing thing in wrestling. And I think that once you bring back the manager role, I think it opens a lot of doors. Because now the wrestler does not have to talk. And that the manager talks, the wrestler gets over. And that's just how it is. The manager plays a significant part and integral role in that. But I think for the most part, a lot of it falls on the wrestler's shoulders. And notice that I say wrestler and not entertainer. Um... You know, I addressed this last weekend. I've been thinking about it more and more. It's like, I don't un understand why... You know, I get why WWE wants to rebrand, and I totally get that. Um, it's always time for an upgrade. But I think at the same time, I don't understand why you don't want to call your entertainers wrestlers. I just... Like, I'm not trying to sound too critical, but it's just... It's stupid. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand what the big deal was by saying wrestler. But, um... All of a sudden, there's a noise coming from my headset. But, um, last piece I want to talk about before I end this is a little update on my documentary I'm making for YouTube exclusively. The Top 20 Greatest Wrestlers of the 2000s. Um, it's basically, you know, I've touched on this a little bit um, outside of my vlog and, like, I've stated in uh, comments on YouTube and on Twitter. Um, my Twitter link is going to be right, right there at the bottom. But um, basically, it's really like a retrospective on the greatest stars of the 2000s. I mean, I basically sit down and discuss some. Some get honorable mentions. Some are actually on there. No particular order. Definitely is the huge point I'm trying to make. Because, sorry about that. You know, as I see it, it's like I cannot rank these guys from top 20 to to number one I just can't do that there's too many guys that really get that credibility to their name and they made a name for themselves for the first 10 years of the decade so I mean that said we're gonna see how it goes I'm mainly looking at WWE and TNA I don't think there's really any Ring of Honor guys on the top 20 um, or any Japanese wrestlers so for you international fans I'm sorry but um yeah, that's really about it for um, the actual, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The actual lineup, I guess, itself. That's what it consists of, WWE and TNA stars. And um, so, like I said, I'll, you know, once I get closer and closer, I'll probably announce a date I'll release it. And, you know, that's it. Like I said, the vlog won't be suffering from it. I will keep on making the vlog while I'm shooting the documentary, so... Yeah, I'm that much of a loser. <laughs> but, um, alright, I will see you next week, and thanks for watching.